One of my favorite daily wear Casio watches, the DW291, the successor to everybody's favorite, the 290, the Mission Impossible watch that there's so many videos that you could watch on. But I really like a lot of what that, while the nostalgia and everything, I love my 290 and I wear it all the time, but there's a lot of nice improvements that the 291 made that we'll talk about. You got the 46 millimeter case sizing, which is fine, but you got more usable space here. You got a bigger display, it's easier to read. There's more going on in that. Plus there are more functions, a lot of functions here. You've got four time zones, four main time zones that you could keep track on. So I kind of have two set to New York, but then you can have four different cities listed there. And it's proper world time as well. I think it's 31 time zones and 46 or 48 cities that you could choose from on this watch so you could get yourself proper world time, which is nice and a definite improvement over the 290. But if you're looking at just plain value, absolute value for $29 in what you get as in a sports watch, it is incredibly hard to beat the 291 when you factor in the build and the fact that it, it has that little bit of shock resistance it's robust it's a nice thick design you've got the little band there that you can protect against if it's about to hit the ground you've got that 200 meters of water resistance in the digital watch here and you're not paying g-shock prices which is quite nice some other things that they got you've got the uh we'll just go through the functions real quick you got five alarms which is nice for a lot of people Countdown timer, which is a necessity for a lot of people as well. People say, well, it's a digital watch. It's odd when it doesn't have a countdown timer because some of them just elect to go with the stopwatch. So that's something that you have here as well. Then you have the stopwatch up to 24 hours, which is quite nice. And then back to your main time zone here. LEDs are nice. I didn't like the kind of switch over from electroluminescence. That's a lot of these watches. Very few still have electroluminescence except for the very cheap end of the line for the Casio watches, which is disappointing. Other brands still do it. Armatron still does it across their line. Some of the George kind of Walmart watches still do it, which I like. But you could tell that it's definitely a step away from that. I like it. It's a dual. I'm not going to do a loom shot because there's really not that much to it. You can see there. What I do like about this is it evenly lights the screen. You've got dual LEDs, dual amber LEDs. So you get a nice even light across the entire way some more expensive watches from casio that one i just did not that long ago i forget the exact reference number but that one that everybody was saying was like the g-shock killer had the one led on the side and the, the right half side of the screen was a little hard to see in the dark this one you have no problems with that just overall usability is good you also have different uh, colorways here with this one uh, this is the one i have with the slightly yellowed lcd panel behind it but you have ones that are kind of have a slate bezel then you have ones with a red bezel that you could take advantage of there are some with some blue accents which are quite nice so you get some variety there i'll include links to the main one on amazon in the description it does help the channel but from there you can kind of branch off to the different variants they have of this particular watch i just this is this this peak i talked about this in the last video there are some watches that casio comes out with that are just absolutely stunners in terms of value everyday wear durability functionality and when you when you factor in the price and then there are some that are just strange uh, straight up bizarre with how they they factor in and get to a certain price there are some new ones people want me to go over the thing is the ae 1200 and i may get one but 45 dollars for that seems awfully steep given it's kind of like the build of the countdown timer and i don't think that would be worth 45 dollars this is worth 45 dollars and they're selling it for 30 so that's something to keep in mind for sure. I, I love the look of it. It's one, it's industrial. It's either you like it or you don't. But if you like the original kind of the DW290, then you're they're mostly used to this. You can see the, the slightly larger display. There are the more readable display. You can see it's they've kind of gotten rid of the rather 90s turquoise writing on there and updated it for the 2000s with this design. But they've kept the spirit of it, which is nice to see. You don't want to see a direct upgrade sometimes or a direct copy or just kind of an updated. You like to see something that's got new features in it, like all the world time functionality this has, that has a new design, but it's still, you feel like you're wearing a DW290 in, in essence. And that's what you really get with this, kind of that scuba dive uh, vibe that you have here with the cutout and the design. And it, you get the plungers, the pistons that you have here on the side. So that's a nice callback to that. I would have loved to have seen some electroluminescence to go along with it, but uh, you can't have everything. So overall, 
I'm really pleased with this watch. Accurate, of course. You're gonna get a nice course movement. I love the proper world time on it with the with the cities. That is something that I, I love my Casio Royale. I love that, but I don't feel like you get that enough on some of these digital watches from Casio, and you have it here. And I like that it it combines that functionality with a more robust 290 to get you something like this in the 291, which I think is just an absolute. If you're looking for it, just an everyday sport watch. And you want the best value you can find of durability, functionality, and water resistance. It is incredibly, incredibly tough to beat the 291. I, that's really just what it comes down to. This is the watch, I think, if you're, if you're to, to, to sit down with somebody and recommend that if they're an outdoors person, if they're a hiker, if they're a swimmer, if they're just somebody that, that's into sports and whatever else, and they wanted one digital watch that would get them through, and they wanted a Casio, and they didn't want to break the bank on a G-Shock, this is, and a lot of cases, you know what, you don't even need to break the bank on a G-Shock, because you don't need all of that, and you could spend a lot less, and in some cases, 50 or $60 less, pick yourself up a 291, and be plenty happy. I, you know, I wound up, I, when they discontinued the 290, you can see this is my one that I wear, it's kind of worn off a little bit here. I got one that I keep in the box in pristine condition just so I always have one of these. So I'll beat this one up. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to beat one up. I'll get a second one that I kind of keep to the side, maybe a different colorway. I like the fact that you can have different variants as well on this one. Kind of cycle it out with your wardrobe or whatever. Have a little rotation of these so you can have one for each day of the week. That's pretty neat. Overall, I just love it. Absolutely fantastic classic design and an updated feature package with all the robustness that you'd expect from a 290 lineup of devices. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.